So hi everyone, hi everyone again. So in the last video we were talking about uh, the Navier-Stokes equation, the Navier-Stokes equation, however you want to name it, and we were talking about mass balance. And this is one of the first times we're talking about this control volume analysis. Now we have already evaluated the mass, the net mass flow rates at these two phases. We'll just call it uh, rho times the area delta z delta z, uh, x times this v. And uh, the same for uh, this other face number two, which is at the back, which I circle this red thing here, y plus delta y. And we shall do the same thing for the x direction. Okay, so rho, okay, delta. So what, what's the area here? What's the area at the back here? So this, this square will be delta z times delta y. Okay, so delta z delta y. That's the area of this square over here. Delta z delta y. And then what? what's the velocity in the x direction? We usually call it u. So, all right, I think I forgot. There should be a minus here. Yes. Anyway, this uh, if the if um, v is in this direction, the net flow rate into the phase will be minus v times the area times the density. Okay. So the net flow rate in you have to take the negative of this so that you get it this way. So v was flowing all along in this direction. If you want a net flow rate into this box, you have to take uh, the positive V in this direction and the negative V in this other direction. Okay, so that's all. All right, so again, we have the X plus delta X there. Okay, X plus delta X. Ooh. All right, x plus delta x. So same thing. The u will be going in, and you can kind of start seeing, you can see a pattern now. So for phase number four, we will have this uh, negative u. You have to take the minus of this thing. Now you can kind of, uh, you, can see, you can see a sort of a, a, a pattern coming up. So if you have velocity in the x direction, uh, you have an x-direction kind of a thing, perpendicular to the x-direction. You have velocity in the x-direction multiplied by z and y. And both of these are perpendicular, or in other words, they like to use the term orthogonal, orthogonal to the x-direction. So delta z, delta y. So these are not x, right? And the same, same thing for here. In the y-direction, we'll have a delta z and a delta x, all right? And these are not y, right? Because these are orthogonal or perpendicular to y. So the area is perpendicular to the y direction. That's why you don't see a y when you calculate the area here, the delta y. So now we'll, we'll consider the z direction. Okay. So the z direction is this thing I'm going to highlight green here. Okay. And then this bottom square here which is also the z direction. So what's the area of this square, this green colored, this green shaded square? Now this is delta x and delta y. And what is the velocity in this direction? It is w. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. So we're just going to change some things here. In phase 5, coming from the bottom, Okay, that will be z, and then there will be rho at, evaluated at z. Sorry, it's very close to the start button, this z button. Okay, so you see, if it's in the z direction, what is perpendicular or orthogonal to z? It is delta x delta y. Then we have the z velocity. And then, of course, this is a positive. 
And of course we copy and paste this over. You'll see you start seeing a pattern. So you see what's coming what's uh, coming in through this phase. It is the minus w direction because w is going in the positive z direction. So we have to take minus w times the area here times the density. And that will be it. So that's phase number six. So we have uh, found the net flow rate in, which is the mass inflow minus mass outflow for all the six phases. So how do you uh, put this accumulation term? Well, the accumulation term is uh, what we call, okay, change with uh, respect to time. Okay, accumulation equals to partial by partial T of rho times V at evaluated at X, Y, and Z. Or rather, to be more accurate, plus 0 0.5 now what am I doing here well I'm trying to uh, okay find the accumulation of mass and mass is just rho times V so rho times V is the mass of this cube here if there's an accumulation Okay, if there's an accumulation of mass, I want the, the, the density evaluated in this cube and of course the volume of this cube. So the volume of this cube, if I say, let's say here is x and then uh, if this coordinate is uh, over here, this is x, y and z. And I want the exact center of this box, let's say somewhere here. Okay, let me erase this thing. If I want the exact center of this box, let's say here. It's very hard to draw the center anyway. So that will be halfway through x. So that's x plus 0 0.5 delta x. That will give me the center of x. Okay, y plus 0 0.5 delta y. There will be halfway point here. Oh, that should be here, sorry. Y plus 0.5 Y. Y plus 0.5 delta Y, which is this point here. So this length is delta Y. I'm taking half of it and adding it to Y. And Z plus 0.5 delta Z. You get a pattern. So this is what I'm doing. Okay. But no matter, the, the idea is there. Okay. The notation may look a bit scary, but don't no worry. And what is this volume here anyway? This volume is nothing but delta x, delta y, delta z. Okay, let's put all this down into one nice equation. So, I'll just sum these things up. Plus, whatever is here plus so we have the y terms down you can see the y velocities down x and then the z direction okay so we have taken the accumulation of mass in this uh, this little box. That's equals to the net inflow through all these six phases, which are all of these. So through the y phases, through the x phases, and through the z phases. That's all that this equation, while it looks a bit complicated, that's all it's saying. All right. Now let's let's note a few things. If we take a look at this delta x, delta y, and delta z, these are constant values, regardless of where you are evaluating them. So, delta x, delta y, and delta z are constant.
these are constant. Okay. Now x delta y and delta z are constant, so uh, these are can, these can be factorized out. So I'm just gonna take them out. Okay. These are the same, so I'm going to factorize these out here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same for the x direction. So delta z, delta y. So I'm going to do that. Just factorizing all the delta x, delta y, delta z's out. Nothing more than that to make the equation neater. All right, so now I'm just going to divide throughout by this delta x, delta y, and delta z. So I'm going to divide by delta x, delta y, delta z. Do nothing more than that. All right, so all I'm getting is I'm going to get this off and what do I have here if I have delta x delta z delta z delta x divided by delta x delta y delta z you just you just get one divided by delta y and the same thing here one divided by delta x and the same thing here one divided by delta z now if you have uh, done enough calculus, you'll, you realize you want to have limits. You want to make this box really, really small. So, how do you do that? So, we have limit. Okay, limit. X delta X come to zero. So, limit. Delta y becomes to zero. And the limit delta z goes to zero. What do you get? So all these delta uh, x, delta y, and delta z will become it becomes to dx delta y becomes dy and again delta z goes to dz so that's all that's doing hopefully you have some uh, calculus knowledge you should have Okay, so that's all we are doing here, nothing much. So I'll have this. Okay, now we are getting, uh, we are getting very much almost there with the mass balance bit okay and there's this thing left okay so now what does this thing look like well if we recall what the limits actually look like if we have a simple uh, delta y delta x dy y delta x so if you remember the the fundamental uh, fundamental theorem of calculus as you limit uh, delta x becomes to zero 
is delta y delta uh, x becomes to dy dx. Or sometimes even we can call it this, the partial derivative. Partial derivative means that you keep every other variable constant except this x, which we will use it to differentiate. So that's what we are going to end up with. All right, you're going to end up with a few differentials. Okay, so this this y plus dy, I mean y minus uh, y plus dy, and then this is uh, rho v at y. And what is this? This is actually minus minus of a rho v minus delta rho v. Okay, so what is it going to look like? This, if let's say this y, this y over here is this rho v, and uh, what is this delta y actually? This delta y is rho v, or if you want to, okay, let's do, it, let's do it this way delta rho v equals to rho v. evaluated at y plus dy minus rho v evaluated at y okay so if you want to find the change in this rho v across this length dy we'll have to use this much okay but of course you see the signs are kind of reversed so you will need to just do a minus sign. So we will have this. Okay, now we are just rearranging these terms to make it look a little more friendly. That's all we are doing. And what we are doing is that we are trying to find the change in this variable as y changes and then we will get this delta rho v and then all we will get if this delta if this dy goes to zero if limit if it limits the delta y goes to zero we will have this expression Okay, that's all we are doing. If we limit this delta y goes to zero, this is the definition of the, uh, the limits as we have done calculus before. So all we are doing is this. Okay, so I'm going to replace this minus partial by partial y rho dot v. And then the same thing I can do for partial partial x row u. And the same thing I do for the z direction. Row w. Now if that was too fast. Let's reiterate what I'm doing again. If not, you can skip this part because you're going to finish the video soon anyway. So, we are finding the changes of this uh, property rho v, rho u, and rho w. So, we have already established that, okay, we have done, you should have done calculus before. Okay, so I'm going through the calculus things again. This delta rho v is nothing but. Uh, or if you can take the minus of it, if you take delta y goes to zero, you'll have a d rho v. So you can have the uh, d rho v dy. Uh, it can come out. All right. So that's a fundamental calculus thingy. You should know it. All right. So if you limit everything to zero, uh, we should get this.
all right so all these are evaluated x, x y and z wherever that is so i'm just going to erase this away for clarity okay okay good very good so we are almost there so you see there's a there's a something there's some kind of a pattern emerging right all right so anyway we find that if we put this pull this all to the right uh, left hand side okay you pull this all to the left hand side we'll have a plus okay and this will equal to zero okay so what's it saying the rate of accumulation of mass or in this case we divide by volume so it's density that's equals the net flow rate through the y phases net flow rate through the x phases net flow rate through the z phases that's all this uh, mass balance is looking about uh, is talking about so we have uh, converted our mass balance into sort of a a what do you call that uh, a mass equation How do you, not a mass equation uh, a diff partial differential equation so this is a partial differential equation okay so for mass balance this is what you get uh -huh. I hope that was uh, helpful at least yeah, you know what's going on uh, especially with all these calculus going on it can be a bit confusing but uh, if you're confused I suggest you go and look into uh, the fundamental theorems of calculus and uh, get some revision on that and come back to this video and you kind of uh, know what I'm talking about all right so uh, this is this is the end for part two of Navier-Stokes equations I hope you enjoyed this video bye bye